Welcome to another episode of the Reluctant Adult Podcast. My name is Paul, and I am joined, as always, by the man who has many faces, Bill. Hi, everyone. That's right. So many. Here's one right now. It's Manny. And don't forget this one. Oh. You are known to wear a, a mask or a costume of, or two on the show. Yes. So I will. Yes. I think that's fair to say you're a man of many faces. That's true. It's like that plot line in Game of Thrones that really didn't seem to go anywhere. For them, they had the character that could change who. Oh, who the they faceless were. man. Yes. But then it's yeah. like they they died maybe, and then Arya right. just sort of like kept going, kept on trucking. I don't know. Yeah. No. It was whatever. Weird. I don't know. Best, it really all. Forgotten. It really all fell apart. <laughs> It did. It, it really did. all fell apart. It's okay. Uh, it is. Okay. I mean, it's I look at myself. Whatever. Say one night I don't use my CPAP machine, and then I'm sure. just an awful person the next day. Wow. I learned that about myself. Well, you become dependent on air, on yes. oxygen. You realize <laughs> how important oxygen yeah, is to right. us oxygenarians. Oh, uh, sure. <sighs> Speaking of things you can't live without. Um, we want to welcome a new sponsor to the show. They started playing their ads last week. You may have heard them. Rotella Resale, your premier collectibles, toys, and novelty retailer. Free shipping on U.S. orders. Save 10% with promo code RADIO. We'll have to work on getting a personalized uh, affiliate code. or Not affiliate, but whatever. Savings code. Now, um... We we want to say we want to thank Rotella Resale. We were talking about them last week because um, their ad sounds great. And if you go on to their Facebook page, they have a video from a few years ago, and we were like, "Is that AI?" Because there's there's a right. woman, <laughs> there's two women, but it's, I, we think it's one woman or AI, so no women mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about Rotella Resale. And we were like, "Is this AI?" But it's from a few years ago. So it's less likely. We so I right. think I think it is a real woman, and she's wearing a wig, maybe because she appears on the screen as two different people. But yeah. go go to, go to their Facebook Rotella Resale. Check it out for yourself. Let us know what you think. Is it AI? Is it real? Are they time travelers? Did they travel into the time to get the AI Ooh. technology we have in 2024? Yes. Um, if you would like to advertise on the show. Just send us an email, the reluctant adult podcast at gmail.com. We uh we will work with you, whatever you want to do. We we love supporting the uh collector community, small businesses, anyone that wants to pay us. If you'd like us to show up at your birthday party, <laughs> if you'd like to have us host a convention in your town. Uh, oh. we will, we are more than willing to travel yes. if you pay for our travel. We listen, bar mitzvahs, <laughs> weddings, whatever we're, we are the life of the party, especially if there are toys involved, not those kind of toys. Um, anyway, so uh, again, thank you. Rotella resale sponsoring us. If you'd like to sponsor, if you'd like to be a sponsor, the reluctant doll podcast at gmail.com. Now, Bill, yes. this week <laughs> we've been talking about turtles of grace call for months we first saw that months. grainy uh should yeah. not have been released photo of yeah. leonardo and we could barely make out what it was Some and then he man at one point it, there was a it was just bizarre and then i don't know if yes. it was at a toy fair some convention they had it was it was it was on display but it was just like card art right and it was like a right. digital render of the figure and then finally Finally, they Mattel put out actual showroom photos of the toys, so we could see what they look like. And they've been out yes. series one and two. I think series is series three starting to trickle out. Is is Moss Man considered has, series three? I I don't know. That was maybe a he's considered series itself. two. Well, <laughs> Walmart exclusive. Yes. So we we had three turtles, but we we had not seen prior to this week Michelangelo. We knew he was coming. Or that was, was going to be one of the strangest decisions in Toys history, but we didn't. We had not seen him this week. I think we saw the rest of the line. They just showed off everything so that's left. Everything, right? Yeah. Now I don't. I saw that Pixel Dan was complaining that 
something got leaked and he was supposed to have the official review reveal. I don't know if that was specific to Turtles of Grayskull or another okay. He-Man thing, but were these photos leaked before they were supposed to officially be out? I think they were because they yeah. they had they had an event where they actually had series 3 mm-hmm. to show off and then all of a sudden like within a day yeah the rest of the line was just revealed. And we're like, what? Because we got this card back image that was yes. that was small and it was like sort of grainy. And this showed grainy. everything. Michelangelo, Skeletor, then we Tila, saw got April. Some pretty two Bop Steady, which is just mwah. Two Bop Steady. It was I, hadn't seen the, I hadn't seen the name. That's good. Yes. Two Bop Steady. I like that. Yes. <laughs> we we kind of shit on the names, but I, that was that's a good one. I enjoy that. That's yeah, fun. <laughs> Merman, who is Merman mixed with? He looks like he's mixed with a snake. But what what is the what is the the turtle character? Is it supposed to be a turtle character? Oh, do sometimes the villains they're just mutated? I got you. Right, like the attorney like, of villains are. But then there's bit, Leatherhead. Totally Leatherhead is a. a TMNT character, but he's in this, yeah. not mutated with anybody. No, not at all. And then Hord- Hordak. Well, I don't Hordak. know. He just looks like I don't know. an alligator. And then Casey Jones. Like, Casey Jones, like, minimal Motu. He just showed up. He showed here. up for the fight. He's like, yeah. just, just give me a give me a different mask. Make it metal. He's got a sword, at least, and maybe a shield. Okay. I will say the standout of this line Splinter. This may be uh, the best Splinter figure ever for any line. Splinter it looks skull. great. He does look good. It looks really good. I, like I think I want that cape. one the most. Okay. That's that's a fun Splinter. I want to. Yeah. He's got the braids coming down, or like what did he? Bra- they braided like the under under his jaw or something. Oh, really? I don't even know. He's it just there's like something King there. Skull. Well, yeah, Got exactly. That modeled after him. The the tail looks very familiar. It looks very reminiscent of the Playmates uh, Splinter. Oh, with nice. Gray becomes like a weird, yeah, yeah. So I'm excited for those. Um, oh, and then another really fun one, Michelangelo. We finally saw him. He's got He Man's hair. Right. So what does that tell you about He Man's hair? <laughs> that it's a wig. It's been a that wig this a wig? whole time. It's always yeah. been a wig. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a fun one. I do like that they're having fun. With these, and then another Leonardo, which is a another Leonardo and yeah. uh, He Man. What is that like, Ninja Strike or Ninja Stealth? Ninja Stealth, He Man. He Man. Yeah. Which, yeah, I get the variants. I mean, but... We didn't have a normal He Man, so I think that's fair. April actually that's looks fair. great. April is a very, very she good does. figure. Yeah, I think it's funny. I feel like Mattel has done a better job with April and and Splinter than Playmates or NECA. I think these fair are great. Enough. They look. And then, she looks good. Yeah, she looks good. She Skeletor is fun. He looks big. I don't know if it's just the scaling of the photo or if he's a larger figure, but he looks mm-hmm. got some neon green. So this finishes off the line. We got all the characters. Are there any characters you feel like were omitted? I don't. I don't think so. I think they went through no. some pretty core characters on both sides of things. We got. We got. Um, Mousers, but we didn't get like a Baxter, right? So maybe, maybe there's uh, some room for an- another. I wonder if there'll maybe. be another deluxe, or maybe is one of these considered a deluxe figure? Maybe Skeletor is a deluxe figure, maybe, or maybe, maybe. Uh, April is just because of the size of those wings, because of the wings, maybe. Yeah, do we have enough figures to make um, what's it? What was that Men- Metal Bob? Bob? Metal bottom. <laughs> Metal Do we bottle? have enough? I believe Are, so. How many figures is it? Is that spread? I think a, it's only. Across? I think it's only four. Four. Okay. I could be mistaken, but I think well, it's I don't know. four. Because how it, how many deluxe figures do we have? I feel like Moss Man was three. We have the Krang. Isn't the Krang a uh, robot a deluxe? Krang is a deluxe. Oh, and then Slasher yeah. or Slaker, Slash, whatever they call him. Sl- slacker. Slacker. Yep. Yeah. All right, so maybe yeah. we have enough. So this is this has been a great collection. I think these are really fun. I wonder nice if... Nice and condensed. Yeah. I wonder if it did well enough that they will, will be like, oh, let's do another set. And what that would look yeah, like. Nice. Probably just be repaints at this point. But um, 
It, this was a nice treat. This was a nice. We definitely didn't see it coming. No. Playmates. Uh, well, not playmates. It's I, it tech, you know, play. You think of tor- turtles from the beginning. You think of playmates, and it's like you have to get permission from playmates, but not really. It's it's through Nick, no. Nickelodeon. Obviously, right. playmates had some sort of say with the Super Seven deal, but maybe they just made a stink to Nickelodeon. It wasn't maybe. like them directly standing in the way. I need to get. We need to get like a foot soldier, but make it Fisto. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Fist, yeah, Fisto soldier. Yeah, yeah, I, I I do think the the foot soldier is something that That's that no got mission. skipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they did a good job for everything they did. Lot good, good selection, good good everything, good on them. Um, yeah. So I wonder, you know, if this will be one of those things where people are completist, and then, then people who, you know, later down the road, some figures will be more sought after because people want to have a full collection. Maybe they. Want oh, I to think build it's, I think it'll be a nice motor. set. It is a nice set. It'll yeah, it'll be a nice set. Yeah, to keep and the carding is great, so you could have a a, a mint on card collection too. So right, this might be one to watch. Keep an eye on that secondary market if you, uh, you know, it, and if you are are thinking twice about jumping in, maybe just do it just to have them. Yeah, and then you could probably I mean, sell them at least make your money back. Starting to see wave one a lot more at Target, so that's good. Yeah, I don't think I've seen any of the turtle characters i feel like i saw man at arms once yeah that man at arm figures i feel like is a is one that's being overlooked a lot like people don't really talk about that figure yeah he's a lot of fun but he's solid yeah yeah and you need him so you can make that giant bow for donatello right right combine them yeah so this was a good way for he-man to uh to get back on on the shelves at retail, show retailers that he's got some juice left in the in the tank. Um, so, of course, the other He Man adjacent project that we've been talking about recently is Flipboard. Now, if this is the first time listening to the show, maybe you've never heard of Flipboard. Flipboard is a Kickstarter project from Mad Hatter Reviews. He is a a brand new character from the mind of Mad Hatter. Um, but he is very much in the style of the He-Man Origins figure. He's already been funded. And now we're just sort of un- unlocking more goals as we go. So we didn't know much about Mad Hatter. Or at least I didn't know much about Mad Hatter. We didn't know a lot about this character. Um, as the weeks have gone on, we've been learning more. We've been talking about it. And then mad hatter himself the mad hatter reached out to us and uh we will hopefully be talking to the mad hatter we still don't know his real name (laughs) he's just the mad hatter mad hatter reviews maybe reviews is his last name um and then uh some of the other people that are are working on this project we're hopefully going to talk to them this week so maybe by the end of the week you will have a bonus podcast to listen to oh um, and then we, we, you know, this has really got our wheels spinning about, well, clearly there is an appetite for these kind of figures. This figure is a success. They have to do another figure. Flipboard needs someone to battle against. Who is the natural enemy of the toy flipper of the scalper? I think it goes without saying it's the podcaster who talks about them, right? It's obvious. It's obvious to me. I could agree with that. I yeah. think it should be obvious to everyone. So we have some ideas that we're going to float to Mad Hatter, and we'll see if maybe we can um, collaborate, collaborate and listen on a project in the future. But lots to, to talk about, lots to learn about the whole Kickstarter process, the toy-making process. Um, so so keep an ear out for our interview about Flipor. Ooh. All right, Bill. It, it, we're getting down to the wire here. We're talking about Super 7 Simpsons. So oh, last yes. week, last week I said that Series 3 came in stock just a week out from when Series 2 came in stock. And I ordered them. They showed up. I got them. And they just keep getting better and better. Like this is this set, four figures, Monty Burns, Ralph Wiggum, and the two aliens, Kang and Kodos. Now I will say let's start let's start with the weakest link, okay? I'm gonna pull out a figure. This is Ralph. That's Ralph. 
God, now, look at that I, hair. this th- this is not a bad figure, but I will say that it's probably the weakest figure in the entire line. Yeah. Because mostly because oh my. they went for it and it just didn't work out. The way they did no. the hair, it's oh. too thick. It looks like a spider. It looks like an <laughs> infinite armed spider on top of it. It looks head. like it looks like a spooky eye from this angle. <laughs> A spooky eye. Ah. It does. If it was white, yeah, it just looks like the the blood uh, it's vessels got a in the eye. Yeah. Eye. Oh my God, you're right. It does just look like a really bloodshot eye. Oh my. Get God. a new. Get get one for next week and just pop the head off and put them on your own eyes. No, you have to like pull yes. the. Oh, you mean like pull? Just put it on my eye. Like. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Hello. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Stop. This is what our this is what our Motu oh. character is gonna look like. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know there are two there are two heads. Oh, here we go. Because oh my god, see this is why these are so much fun. You're not gonna get see. this kind of stuff with the Jax figures, because you got the one eye, the one normal head, and then you got ice cream cone eye. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what, what happened? I got a tiny ice cream stuck in my eye. What's happening? Oh no! Oh my goodness! I can't get this head on. I, I didn't try too hard, but maybe I have to yeah. warm it up. So here's the here's the thing. Ralph is not an exciting figure because his character is so even keeled. That's the humor of Ralph. So he doesn't right. really translate into an exciting figure. It's just the it's just the reality of it. So one thing I really liked that they did is they gave him two hands that are holding the two sides of a pot of paste so the right. one side is holding the pot and the other one's holding the top so it's like even though it can't really reach to get it in there it's a nice moment where it's like he's holding it and those are like permanently attached so they did the best they could i don't remember what the playmates figure looked like for hair was it just like it wasn't like a separate piece like this one is like a soft plastic was it, was it just definitely like not, stuck no, on there wasn't, i think it was definitely stuck on there if not even cut, drawn on like tampo stamped on there that's what i was thinking too they might have just like charlie browned it yeah the other non-alien character in the set is mr burns again not like a super exciting character but i will say the beauty of these super seven figures is they give them alternate heads that allow them to have so much personality so here's mr burns and his beloved teddy bear and look at that face look at that See if Bobo. I can get it so you can see it, Bobo. He's got the un- the overbite. Oh, and his, he just he. I know I don't think you can see it too well because of the webcam, but yeah, he is just so pleased. <laughs> he's so happy <laughs> to have that there. But then outside of that, he's got like a normal head and then like a maniacal laughing head, which is fun, you know. Sure. I mean, if we had like Smithers to go with him, like if they were a two pack, I think it. It would have been more exciting. This one's hard to get on. There it goes. So this is good. Lots of personality there with the uh, the laughing. <laughs> I mean, they do just such a good job with these portraits. It's just so impressive. And then normal. Normal Mr. Burns. <laughs> he's like doing, He's got the like the limp hands. Look. Oh yes, dinosaur so, hands. A great yeah. figure. Just sort of like. Not at the top of my list, especially when we don't have normal Homer or Bart. Right. There's Blinky right. being served on a platter. Oh, yes. Great accessories. He comes with a ton of hands. None of them really stand out. Not doing anything like he's not like flipping the bird. He comes with the trillion dollar bill. You can see that. Now, here's something you're not going to get from Jax. We saw those Jax figures a little better this week. And they, they're like the Mario figures. They come with one accessory. That's a, that's a wrestling around. Here's the uh, computer that comes with Ralph. Look at that. You get the keyboard. <laughs> it's raised. It's not just like, it's not painted. But look at the back. Oh. It's got like a little inscription there and a plug. Like they didn't have to make it this detailed. This they didn't Calico have to go this hard. <laughs> But they did, and that's why I love them. So, those are fine. Those are fine. Yeah. The main course. Those were the appetizers. The main course. Look at this. My goodness. Look at He's not even going to fit in the frame. He's giant. He's, 
That's big. I'm going to have to go back. Here we go. Wow. Big. Big, big, big. That's impressive. Look at this. It's amazing. So the dome. Oh, this my be, this is, You got the, a large hand, too. Look at the size of the dome. Yeah, I know. Damn dome it. Dome comes off. Whoa. Oh, Head whoa. A, now look at the eye. Oh, it moves. You can move it. You can pose it. It's not like the, the, the gremlins where it has a ball in the back, but I think it's better yeah. this way. You can just move it wherever you want. It's great. So his tentacles are articulated. He has alternate like tentacle tips. I won't say hands, but he's got the fork and the knife. Is this Kang or Kodos? Can you tell? Or is there any discernible way to tell? I can't tell. I don't know. So they each come with two different heads, so bodies? Which, whichever one's on the right. Or left. Here's the other head. And then here's the other head for the other one. So you can see they gave him like the open mouth. So one of them has a closed eye. So it's like you only get three movable eyes. <laughs> but oh, I guess yeah. you can switch the heads in between the two to get that perfect like you want them laughing and they got the drool mm -hmm. sculpted. I mean, these are just amazing. <laughs> That's fun. One of them, I feel like it's Kodos, but I'm not sure comes with baby Maggie as the alien. Oh, Where, what does she say? This is this is truly a disturbing universe. Yeah, like well, that. not in that episode. Or is that a separate one? It's a different it's a separate one. separate episode, yes. Yeah, the one tooth. Look at this. This is great. This is the only Maggie figure we got. Head moves. I think that's it. Head moves. Great figure. Here's the other one. King or Kodos, you decide. Look at he's a little angry. Look at this. He comes with the serving tray. He opens up. Oh. He can, no food. On, what was under there in the episode? Was it supposed to be the Simpsons like, under there? No, it was just like food. It was just food, yeah. So no food, like but hot still. Dogs and stuff. Get your own. Oh, they were yeah, trying get, to fatten get a mini, Get a mini brand. Put a mini brand yeah, in there. Or, yeah. or build your own uh, microverse food. Play the nachos. I have everything, all the accessories bagged up, but they, each one of them comes with their ray gun, and it's attached to the tip of the, the tentacle. There's the That's book, good. How to Cook for 40 Humans. Ah, uh, very good. Very good. The salt, the salt shaker. Oh, so much. The one, the one accessory that I'm like, this is, this was unnecessary. This is their sign. It says Earth's Capital, <laughs> and it's plastic. It's solid. Oh, like, this could have been cardboard. Like, this is too much. Been. You've gone too far. You're gone now too you far. Now you won't throw it out. Now you won't throw that out. It's plastic. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thrown it out either way. Oh, no. I, but, I treat cardboard accessories very poorly. Oh. I try not to. I do my best not to, but it's not one of those, like, exciting things. Like, the no. uh, Plasma series, uh, Peter Venkman came with the playing cards. Or the Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, ugh, and it's like great paper, wonderful. What am I gonna do with this? <laughs> but it's accurate. It it's was made accurate. of paper. I know. Here's I know. the, I choose 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 you card. Oh, very nice. That comes with Ralph. So again, amazing accessories. But the figure itself not that exciting. But one more set. That's it. We're down to one. And oh. I was checking tonight. Two of the figures. Dredrick Tatum and Radioactive Man pre-sold out on Entertainment Earth. They're gone. It's a frightening so, thing. Prospect. If you want Moo Moo Homer and uh, Devil's Flanders, mm. pre-order them now. <laughs> There's free shipping over 79. And I, th yeah, so those together would give you free shipping. So you can't use uh, toy, uh, code TOYPOD to save 10% because it's not in stock, but you can get free shipping. So go to one of our websites, go to Toy Sailboat on Facebook, click our link so we get credit for it, or go to our Instagram and uh, get them, get them, because they're great. And when they're gone, they're gone. Super 7 doesn't have the license anymore. They're not going to make them. You're going to get some Jack stuff. And it'll be smaller. It'll be, you know, more accessible. But do you think you're going to get baby Maggie? You think you're going to get alternate heads with ice cream cones that look like eyeballs? Oh. <laughs> so someone said that our constant chilling, we must be getting some free 
uh, freebies from Super 7. Uh, au contraire, they have not even said thank you. They have not even yeah. referenced. They have not even acknowledged that we exist. I think we were shitting on them for too long. They wrote us off. Yeah. Brian probably <laughs> blocked me, blocked us on, on Instagram. Nothing. nothing. We're just doing it for the love of the game because these are great and I love them. But uh, I would like free ones. If you want to send me another set to keep in box, I would love that. It's never too late. Okay. Mend those What's fences. next? What's next, Bill? What do you want to talk about? I wish I wish I prepared better because I had a nighttime of fun. And maybe if we go on break, I can run out in the car. It's snowing up here, so that's gross. It is it's nasty. <laughs> um, people are saying that the weather may cause fewer people to go to the movies this weekend which could hurt the box office for ghostbusters okay it's on track for about a 45 million dollar weekend opening which would put it yeah. right on par with afterlife which i think is good i think when if that's the sequel fair. doesn't do drastically worse than the original i think that's a good sign that you can do more of them yeah um you have not had a chance to see it yet, correct? I have not, which I'm I so guess surprised, surprised. surprised you. Yeah. I mean, because you're a big gotta, fan. I'm a big fan. Um, I tried to gauge interest the other day, like Thursday, to go out and see the it children's? in the evening. The children, like at least like four or five people outside of myself, and everyone was like, "No, ah, oh, so it's the okay. It's not there. The excitement's not there." I don't know if this so much it was just was an inconvenient thing to do, but like, also I think about it. And I'm yeah. like, the movie experience, I told you mm -hmm. earlier, I was like, it really mm -hmm. isn't the same anymore. Like, no, going day of and mm -hmm. getting there early and getting pre order like, pre like the pre-order yeah. tickets, like, months ahead. It's all right. gone for me. The, bl the bloom is off the rose. Yeah, we've Nicole seen the Kidman couldn't, couldn't coerce me back in the theater. She couldn't save the, it, no. No, not, not in my I... opinion. I... For me, having my first child, that that sort of put a kibosh on all of that because it just mm -hmm. was hard. It's hard to you know you don't want to like impose every week on a grandparent right. to come watch the kids. And I'm, we're not doing the babysitter thing, so it's just like it's just hard. I have to like find take off work on a Tuesday, <laughs> go save, yeah, get the cheap weird. tickets. That's what we're doing for Ghostbusters. The wife and I would take off taking off Tuesday. We're gonna go see Ghostbusters on Tuesday. Hope they oh, okay. have some traps left. Hope you saved a trap for me, Regal. Going to going for the Regal Trap, Regal's well. Regal's the closest theater. I actually okay. don't know if I'm going to get it. I'm still not sure. I've I from the start I thought AMC was the way to go, but there's something yeah. about the doors. I feel like the the pattern is wrong. The pattern it's like it, is it, wrong. It, it, it doesn't is. start from one end and end on the other. It's like no, it goes it, like, to the it middle. Bees. It's like right. bees. So and it looks. It just hurts go, my brain. It's supposed to just kind of not even cross. Yeah, because it's supposed to be like the the. The middle breaks up the, the line. Right. But that's not how it is. I wonder if that's why they haven't shown it closed a lot. Like, they always show it with that box thing in it. Yeah. I wasn't even sure it closed because I hadn't seen a picture of it. So that might ruin it for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> And then the Regal one has lights and sound, so that's fun. Yeah. Do they both have that little connector that looks like a like the guitar connector on the bottom that you would stick the hose into? At least one right. of them has that. Yeah, one of them does. I don't know so I was like, one. oh, that's actually a really like intricate detail that I wouldn't expect. Like, I don't think the, the Spirit Halloween one had that. No kidding. Huh. So next week we'll have a review of Ghostbusters. I, you know, the critics, the official critics d haven't loved it, but all the fans seem to like it. And everyone's like, yeah. if you liked real Ghostbusters, this really felt like an episode. Um, a I'm lot of the that. stuff, a lot of the stuff we saw in the trailers apparently aren't making it. Not a lot of those red coats. So everyone that went out and bought those like multi hundred dollar red <laughs> winter coats. I hope they yeah. don't have buyer's remorse since they weren't heavily featured in the movie. It's pretty wild considering it's a it's a frozen empire kinda winter themed movie. I know, it's weird. Well yeah. the, the the complaint I'm hearing a lot is the direction. And then, like, it seemed like scenes were missing that would have made things make more sense oh, okay. or help the pacing. So this may be one of the things where the studio got involved and maybe there'll be, like, a director's cut that's better. 
be nice. But, you know, that's not what you get to see in the theater. So no. it's not really fair. But I'm excited to see it. I don't know if I'll wear my jumpsuit. We'll see how hot it is. But oh. it'll be like, no, it's a Tuesday. No one will be there. <laughs> like the ticket right, taker yeah. guy. But like, I really appreciate you went all out for this. Good job. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be theater. right back after this message, and we're going to talk about X-Men 97. All right, so it was long delayed, um, but I think that we can both agree that the wait was worth it. X-Men 97 finally premiered on Disney Plus this week. Two episodes. What were your thoughts? I... Uh, speechless. We are speechless. It's I was, that good. I was speechless. It's that good. So yeah, I listen. I I was surprised because sometimes I mean, granted, mm-hmm. it's Marvel and the Star Wars sure. animation, but I was surprised because you know, Bad Batch is finishing up. They kind of maintain that Wednesday um, drop slot for mm-hmm. for Disney Plus there, but then on Wednesday we get the two episodes of X Men ninety seven. So mm-hmm. I sat and I watched them. I made sure that I wasn't like in front of like. A computer screen. I dedicated it to TV, mm-hmm. and the first episode, very kind of very nice, like kind of just like oh, like a direct callback to those, yeah, original yeah, cartoons. Yeah, yeah. And the second episode, completely off the rails. Oh my god! My opinion. Getting real deep, like so, yeah. like real and like just yeah, amazing, just yeah. amazing TV. Yeah. It really goes to show how people's brains work that for a lot of people, the big takeaway from episode two was that Gambit was wearing that cutoff shirt. Sure. Or was that, was that episode one? I think that was episode two. That was two. one. That was one. That, that was the first episode. Okay. Well, yeah. they both, they so dropped was... at the same time. So still their takeaway from this first couple episodes, like people were like, oh, look at, they made, Disney made Gambit so woke, not remembering yeah. at all what the nineties were like. Right. <laughs> like, absolutely, he would have been wearing that in the 90s. Sure like, look at have. his normal, what he normally wears. He's got the, the pink accents. He's got, like, the crazy, like, I don't even know how you describe what he wears on his head. Like, it doesn't exist in reality. Like, what even is no. that? Like, it can't be replicated in reality. That's what I think right. about a lot of this stuff. This is why I feel like the Marvel Cinematic Universe needs to take a break and we need to go back to animation. Because... Mm-hmm. Watching that first episode, watching them fight as a team against the Sentinels, there is no way to replicate that in live action. You could do it frame for frame, but we wouldn't buy it. It's just not believable. It would look like a cartoon, yeah, because you'd say these are... It would look like a cartoon. It would look like a cartoon. There's just no way to do it. And that's not like, it's not like, oh, you know, there's not enough quality people to do it. It just can't be done. It has to be animated. So, great. This, I hope this show does gangbusters and they go and do uh, Spider-Man 97 or whatever year that would be. Mm-hmm. Give us Go back to Iron Man, Fantastic Four, all of those cartoons from back in the day. Just keep those rolling for a while. Give the, the live action stuff a break. Let it breathe. Because we are oversaturated. But animation is a welcome change. It's just different. We don't need to do homework. We can just catch up. Like, I didn't go back and watch that original X-Men to to, to know where this was. You just just jump in and have fun. You do. I will will confess I watched the last episode beforehand. Just because I was like, I don't really remember the last episode. Because it was during that time where the the animation got a little weird because the show was supposed to end. Yes. There's some story about the so I think Saban who did Power Rangers is responsible for that final season and why it looks so crappy <laughs> because okay. the the studio that was doing the good stuff went on to do another show I forget which show it was but yeah so again you can you thank Saban and their 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 uh, thriftiness for the quality I oh. I went back after the fact and watched Night of the Sentinels because I yeah. wanted to hear the voices because listening to them. Other than Rogue, I thought everyone was was perfect. Like I, not, not, Rogue really like hit my ear wrong. It felt like somebody yeah. trying to do a Rogue impression. But everyone okay, else was fine. There. But specifically Wolverine, I was like, oh, it sounds different. Or I remember it being different. And you were like, it's the same actor. And I was like, oh, well, it's also been, what, 30 years? So people's voices 
change. They they can't do the same octaves they did before. And if you go back and listen to the original Wolverine, it was very down here. Lots of this. And that's probably just not something that guy can do anymore. Like, his voice just can't handle it. So, it's interesting that they stuck with the original actor, even though he can't exactly replicate Wolverine. And you probably mm-hmm. could have found someone that could. But I think that's I think that's probably better. I think people wanted those original actors back. I think so. I think that's yeah. a fair thing to do. I think that's fair, too, yeah. Because it's yeah. still the same... It's just like Wolverine changed a little bit. I don't know why he did, but he did. He changed a little bit. Well, you know, it takes place a year afterwards, after that. I mean, he could have gotten hit in the throat. (laughs) He had some reconstructive surgery or something. Yeah. He he had a lozenge right before they (laughs) filmed that scene. So he was fine. He just had, like, like popcorn stuck in there those the first seasons. Yeah. But I love it. It makes me want to collect the toys more than ever. Executioner. I love that they worked in all the toys we've seen other than the baby sealing character we we all mm-hmm. we saw in the first two episodes like they they hit him it's funny that they gave us old magneto because he did he didn't appear as new animation right he was just flashbacks or maybe like on screen or like on oh, TV with the screen. helmet yeah i think he was in the he was in the danger room uh-huh and he was in the opening credits <laughs> right he's in the, that's that right he's in it. opening credits yeah but we got his figure in series one because it was a surprise right. that he changed outfits so they worked. They they snuck in another Magneto. Whether that was a good idea or not, I don't know. But I bought it. I got them all. The big one I was need funny. To... It was the reaction with uh, when Jean Grey goes into labor and she's like, <laughs> "He's coming he's here. He's coming. He's, he's here. Who? Apocalypse. Apocalypse. <laughs> no, the baby. And then Wolverine drives that Jeep. Like was definitely going to kill those people driving yes. on the sidewalk. <laughs> Like, is this part of, like, isn't it, like, do no harm? Like, you're here to save humanity, but you're going to run them down right. nope, just so she can get to the hospital? Like, you're superheroes. You can't take care of this baby? Like, can't uh, she, like, mind meld with the baby? But, like, hold hold on. You don't need to come oh, yet. Sh- like, come on. Slow down a little. I thought it was so funny that they had Jean pregnant, like, running around. Like, right. could you imagine a pregnant character, like, on cartoons back in the 90s like that just seemed that i don't think that would have happened i don't know it's so bizarre no of course not yeah no it's it's a lot of i was like oh that's you know because it's like oh superheroes get pregnant i guess that is a thing but you don't really think about it you don't so this cartoon already doing more work (laughs) breaking down more barriers than we've seen in live action in a long time and that's another thing about cartoons. They can kind of go there, and it might fly under the radar, or people can just sort of be like, ah, it's just a cartoon. But, like, you can get yeah. some real, uh, get real deep, get some real deep ideas with cartoons. I think so. I think this was evidence to it, so. Yeah. So, how many episodes are we getting in this season? I think only ten. Okay. But we have season two in the can. It's ready to roll. Oh this, really? Oh, this that was makes supposed to be done excited. like a year ago. Season oh, one should boy. have been out a year ago. Yeah, so oh, season wow. two is ready to go. They're already working on season three because they fired the oh, showrunner. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but they're doing season three. So Disney, Disney has some faith in this, and uh, that's great because it's awesome. And Hasbro yeah. really needs it. They really need the X Men. They, <laughs> they do. I feel like so. I feel like this should be assigned to all of Marvel. We want the mutants we want the x-men like you've been tiptoeing around it for long enough just pull the pull that band-aid off just make it happen figure out who the new wolverine's gonna be yeah is it henry cavill i don't know i don't think so (laughs) somebody somebody make a good choice (laughs) that's all i'm saying they're just waiting to see what happens with deadpool that's what's it's gonna gonna be one of those you think that's what they'll do whichever like multiverse version of Wolverine has the best audience score. They're going to be like, all right, you're it. Congratulations, think, Daniel Radcliffe. There you go. I think so. Danny DeVito. You tell me, please tell me Danny DeVito is one of the Wolverines. That would be brilliant. I haven't heard that as a rumor, but that just is the perfect casting in my mind. Did I spoil something? <sighs> What's next? What's the next big story we want to talk about? Was there a lot? I feel it was a very busy week. There's a lot. I'm just trying to look. Right, so this isn't so much a, a news. This isn't breaking news by any means. But I finally went to an Ollie's and saw these starting lineup figures for myself mm-hmm. with my own eyes. Because we've seen the pictures of just like, I can't even, dozens and dozens. 
dozens and dozens and dozens lined up at so many different ollies. Every figure, the backboard, seven bucks. Backboard's like three bucks or something crazy. So yeah. I finally saw it for myself. No Kobe's, no uh, Celtics player, no backboard, but like lots of figures and just like haphazardly thrown <laughs> on shelves. Like some of them still in their shipping container. Oh, just wow. like these figures are trash to Ollie's. Like they must have got them for a dime. They care, could not care less about them. And think about like- that. Think about the origin of these figures. They were rolled yeah. out with such pomp and circumstance. How much did they cost? 50 bucks 50 at bucks minimum 50 yeah, plus 55. shipping from Hasbro right. Pulse that's they weren't a, they weren't a target you couldn't wait for clearance no, these weren't. were only available through Hasbro and then I think like FanDuel or whatever yeah like, you can I think yeah. I think you get them from the respective players like fan if you like went into the fan store at like right any of the stadiums or anything they'd be there so Hasbro was really shooting for different audience here they weren't shooting for the toy collector they wanted the sports collector they thought the sports collector would be willing to pay that high price and they were wrong (sighs) so in my mind if there was like a lifetime achievement award for like the biggest misstep in toys you have the ET Atari game I feel like that's that's, that's the gold standard. That's the legend, but then yeah. just like one step below starting lineup relaunch. Because from fifty dollars with an NFT. <laughs> yeah. So that's a whole other thing. So all these came with NFTs originally. The NFTs are not included in the ones you buy at Ollie's. Where did those go? Not that they're worth anything, but like did those do like do they technically exist? Or did I don't know how NFTs work. Didn't they have to be mined or something? I don't know how those know. NFTs work if they're not included. Yeah. In the, but did they, like, are they in, the, in some, does, like, the the top Hasbro brass have, like, the codes or whatever? Like, who blockchain. even knows? They've got That's the, the thing. With the, who even knows what it is? Is it, like, printed <laughs> out in a Word document somewhere, a string of numbers and letters? It's like, ah. Uh-huh. But anyways, this is this is insane. Like, we need to remember this. And this isn't to say the toy company shouldn't take chances, but you shouldn't do dumb shit like this. You shouldn't you shouldn't disrespect the collecting community this way. I feel like this was honestly disrespectful to the people who brought you to the dance. Like these weren't for toy collectors. You're like, we don't need you. We want a different audience. We want sports memorabilia collectors. Well, they didn't watch you, Hasbro. No, so remember right that next time. It's right up there with the time. Fortnite people. It's right up there with the Fortnite people. I mean, it's past that, but, you know. Fortnite, same, I feel... Fortnite, at least, they're... Like, Jazzwares was selling Fortnite toys when Hasbro bought that. Like, yeah, there was proof that they sell okay. Still didn't do great. Like, Hasbro's had no. a real bad run of luck, but this is self-inflicted wound, 100%. So when we do our award show, we're gonna have the uh, lifetime achievement award for the worst, the worst toy decision of the year. Brought to you by worst starting line. Worst toy lineup. decision ever. The worst decision ever. You sent me a TikTok this week of this guy that we know from Instagram who makes mannequins. Mannequins, yes. And he he's selling his house. Is that the deal? That's what the video that is about. Looked like yeah. So it was uh, was it um. It was W W B Z News Radio up here. Um, that one guy that does TikToks. Yeah, what's his I like name? him. He's he's funny. I don't know. He does like we'll a man right on the here. street, yes. right? And he does it like all by himself. Like he, he d- he's got yeah, like he's... the the recorder on him, and then he's like sets up his camera. Right. Like he's become like a star in a in a he's in, great. In of himself. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just goes to all like the the hole in the wall places around New England, but and just talks to up... people, get yeah. that flavor, New England flavor. Yeah. We but up at he, this gentleman's house, Greg Mario, Mario. I don't know how you pronounce his last name. Yeah, it's Mario. Him. Greg. We'll call him Greg. Greg from Instagram. So right. we know him because he was doing, he was making life-size mannequins, and he was turning them into the X-Men animated series characters, and they were amazing. Right. They were he got, excellent. He got like through the whole team. <laughs> he had he a did. beast and a lab coat. Yes, I don't know if he, he did Professor them, X, but he, he got brings a lot them to of conventions. Them. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, so he, he brings them to conventions now, and he actually has Professor X's chair, mm. and you can sit in it, and oh, you're Professor that. X, surrounded by the X Men. That is a good photo opportunity. Yeah. So he was. So apparently, 
model making is a very uh, prosperous uh, Quite industry <laughs> because he has a very nice house that he is trying to sell. Yes. And I get the impression that he's not downsizing. <laughs> I think, no. I think he needs more space for his mannequins. Right, because they're so. they're adorned all through the house as well. These aren't just the X Men right. one. These are yeah. These are a lot of Batman villains. Um, mm-hmm. Batman Poison Ivy from heroes the Schumacher stuff looks just like Uma Thurman in the house. That's the- crazy. It's crazy. I don't know how he it's does the wild. faces. It's, I don't it know is wild. It's absolutely wild. And he was saying that he'll sell them to people who own the screen used costumes. Because yes. they'll want to display it. And what better way to display it than to have a mannequin? <laughs> like, right. I would do that, too. I would love to oh, have, like, like, a Ghostbusters Dan in there. Oh, that would be the best. You get him posed holding the proton pa- or holding the uh, neutrino wand. Oh. Be excellent. Yeah. It would scare the kids. They would love it. It would be the best. <laughs> so, good for him. <laughs> we should have been better friends. You could have gone and hung out at his house. I didn't know he was in Massachusetts. Did you know that? I did know that. You didn't know that. All right. Well, that's your yeah. fault. You could have gone. It is my fault. Him, but, I know. Yeah. I know because we were talking. Speaking of Massachusetts, him. you discovered something very interesting this week. I, did, I didn't discover it. Oh, you didn't discover it. My sister. It was discovered to you. you yes. You, you, yes. You discovered it to me. So, you know, having siblings that know that you are just heavily influenced by all things toys and just mm-hmm. enjoy toy stuff in general. Mm-hmm. My sister lives up in New Hampshire sent me a photo of a storefront that was a liquor store. They had taken the sign down and behind the sign was the, I had to, you had to look cause you're like, what is this? Mm. Yeah. Like, what it you was me? the, it was the, the leftover, like the remnants of the, the outline, the outline. It was, yeah. it was something, the KB toy works logo. The ghost of the KB Toy Works logo. It was leeching me. back out of the cement and yeah. displaying itself. Because you I said it to like me, I and I was like, like, "What are you? What am I looking? What at is here? this?" Well, and then well I so looked they... closely, and I was like, "What is? Is that a? Oh, that is. Yes. So was that a Toy Works or like a straight it was up a KB? KB? It was a KB Toy Works. So I think. Well, I only I... knew them as KB Toy Works. I never knew Toy Works. The toy as a works, separate right. entity, so it I actually think entity. I know the one that this is because I used to you go. Should I would leave Nashua and drive to the Amherst Walmart? Yes, and this yes. was like on the way. Yeah, 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 it was. Oh, I loved it. I love that one. I didn't it was like go a to newer this one, one often too. enough. It was. I didn't yeah. go to this one often enough because we weren't going up to Amherst. We'd still be going to Leominster, going yeah. to Ames. Ames coming back, by the way. Apparently, if you saw that news, great. I don't believe it, but I, you know it won't be the same. But whatever, I love, I love it. Bring it all. Thirty, back. thirty-five stores by the end of twenty twenty-five. They're saying, right next to Toys R Us, including including the Ames Cafe. Ooh, bring back Coming Kmart. Back. I know it's not technically yes. gone, man. You know what? Let's bring them all back. Bradley's, Caldor. Come on, guys. Keep we need it, more retail. Yeah. We need more we retail. So I was, I was completely out. disappointed. Um. Right next to the Target that I frequent most, there was mm. a hollow shell that used to be a Bed Bath & Beyond. Mm. My hope was that it was going to become like an Ollie's or yeah. a Ross, and they'd kind of yeah. like move their way up here a little bit. Yeah. I'm driving up, going to Target to pick something up. I look, coming soon, Bob's Discount Furniture. And I'm no. like, dang it, do we really need, Don't need more Discount Furniture? Discount Furniture and like, Car washes and car parts, like these are things yes. we have enough. Storage, we have enough storage facilities, storage, God. dentists. We have a lot of dentists all of a sudden. Urgent care, urgent care. Yeah, what the hell? Why we What's wrong with people? Why you need so many urgent cares? Why shouldn't be making money off people being hurt? It's not right. It's not right. Well, that's exciting. Did you get? Yeah. That was that is it. You need to go up there and do like a live report from the scene and oh, really right. document it because they're going to cover it again unless they tear they it down. They are. They are. Yeah, you got to get up there. Is it? Is there I anything should... left that you could take, or it's just like when the, no, like, the atomic the liquor, bomb went the off liquor store. and there was, was like the, the shadows store. burned in? To the, no, it's the New it Hampshire just... liquor store. So the New Hampshire know, but liquor it... store took over the Pier One building. Oh my god! And they've been remodeling this Pier One building for like the last nine months to become a New yeah. Hampshire liquor store. Okay. 
But I'll get up there. Maybe I'll do my own like man on the street thing and just interview yes. people coming out of Market Basket and being like, hey, what do you think of this historical? We want to preserve this, like the save the clock tower moment from Back to the Future. Save the KB Toy Work sign. Save it. I need to start. Can you get a petition running and get people to sign it? Like, how quick can you make that happen? I don't know the official steps. Get it. Get uh, it going. Get the guy. Get the WBZ guy up there. Does right. he take like suggestions? We're gonna tweet at him, or we're gonna TikTok yeah. at him. However that works. I'm gonna tag him. What's his name? We don't know, sir. Dan Sh- Dan Shear. People, Dan Shear? enough enough of this inner city stuff. Go to the outskirts. Yeah. You don't make it up to the New Hampshire way enough. People, this is what people right. want to hear it's about. It's southern New Hampshire, technically. I mean, you're in, right. you're in Massachusetts within 10 minutes. It's yeah. Within your, in Tax your, free? your driving range. Come yes. on. This is where everybody's going. This is this is the true secrets of New England. All right. Well, that's exciting. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Um. All right. We got to talk about Todd McFarlane because he was in the news for a couple of things this week, and uh, it was completely unrelated to him. <laughs> It's like stuff he did in the past or didn't oh. do. Uh, the first thing is somebody had a, a tweet, like a series of tweets going about the craziest thing you ever heard in an article or an interview. And somebody said that Todd, in an article, Todd McFarland said that when he goes to a convention, he does not eat and he does not go to the bathroom the entire time that is it, he is at a convention. He just stays at the table signing autographs. Oh, wow. And one has to ask how that is even possible. That seems he must, of all the things, we learned so much about him. We learned that he likes to walk around in bare feet. Um, yep. That's pretty much all. We learned, we know he too likes, much about Todd. He likes sports. and He likes sports, sports balls, collectibles. collecting sports yes. balls. He wishes the NFTs took off because <laughs> he was really excited about making NFTs with all his brands and it just didn't happen for him. Mm-hmm. But uh, the other thing, people are People, people. Uh, it's not that they're upset about the not peeing thing. They just think that's kind of weird. They are actually upset about him because he held a contest earlier this year. He called it Sponuary. It was in January, Sponuary. Yep. And he basically had people drawing alternate covers to his comics, and he was going to include those as actual covers that you could buy. Some Something okay. about that. So people, you know, they drew comics and uh, he picked some winners and one of the winners that he chose turned out to be AI generated art and uh, which is bad because, you know, (laughs) as an artist, as someone whose career is drawing things, uh, it's just it's a bad precedent. But also it goes a step further because the guy that won, he went to his Instagram and basically was like, F you artist. I told you I would beat you with AI and I did. And oh, he basically I didn't know that had part. well he deleted it, but okay. people people saved it and we had a You can't delete the internet friend. that quickly. You can't wow. de- if it's, it never leaves the internet. You can't hide. So one of our good friends uh sent that to me so I could see it. Um, okay. and uh, he was like, ah, I'm a fifty five year old man. I don't know why he had to mention how old he is. Mm-hmm. But clearly, uh, he I, well, I won't say clearly, but it seemed to me that he wanted to be an artist, didn't work out for him, so he discovered AI, and now he's gonna take down the entire system from within. Oh wow! Because his prompt, his prompt for the AI, AI was like, create me a, create an award-winning design. Like he put that in the prompt. Yeah. And, and it, you know, he won, so it worked. But uh, it worked. how far away are we from having these, like the children's coloring contest? You know, oh, like you God. put up the coloring pages at the right? grocery store. You got to do this in front of me. Kid. You got to do it in front of me. <laughs> I remember they had like the Hallmark store or something there, and yeah. I would always like for Easter they would do it. I would always try right. to do it. I would never win. I would never. Win. I won the I won the Geppetto's contest. That's that right. Year. That That's was the right. Big thing for decorating was it based the on egg. merit or was it random? Yeah, I think it was based on merit or oh, age. Look at I you. Don't know. You could have been an artist. I could have been. I should have just kept going with the Geppetto stuff. <laughs> no, but AI AI is also in the news. Like for the media, there's this movie out called uh, Yes, is it Late Night with the, the De- Devil. Late Night with the Devil. And they use like two AI generated prompt cards, like yeah. like yeah. like ad breaks. 
Right. And people are just in an uproar over that, too. Well, I saw that. So I follow this TikToker, Jay Stubes, and she's on, on Twitter, too, because she's she's all about the movies and I like to hear like she's very passionate about these the movies and like I'm not as passionate about movies but I like to hear mm-hmm. the people like what their thoughts are so she's very anti-AI and she was saying that they were really trying to underplay the involvement because yeah you like you just said two cards that were like transition cards except one of them was part of the set so it was visible throughout the almost the entire movie oh but the thing to me is are the people who are like against AI, do they envision a future where AI is outlawed? Like, do they not think that, do they think there's a path forward where the studios are going to be like, I know this will save us literally billions of dollars, but we've decided that the art is more important. Like, yeah. is there a version of the future where we don't see AI used in movies? I don't, I don't think there is. No, I don't think so either. So, yeah. Are they just trying to like hold on as long as they can rather than embracing it? They must be. I mean, look at how, just, all the fun you've had with AI over the last that's why, few months. I that's why it. like people that we are friends with and respect come out against AI. I'm sort of like, yeah, you know, I want everybody to keep their jobs, but also AI is really like helping us do a lot of things that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise because I'm mm-hmm. I can't pay artists to make like all these things for me that I'm all these assets that I'm using that I need like immediately. And just like in my brain, I'm like, make it. And it does like, I wouldn't be able to do a lot of things without it. But like, at the same time, I totally understand that people are going to lose their jobs. And like the doomsday scenario here is that there is no human made art anymore. Like I get that that's a concern, a very real concern, but I just don't know that it's possible to put the genie back in the lamp. It's too amazing. It's the most amazing advancement we've made in terms of media yeah. ever, maybe. No, I think it's, yeah, I think it it's just levels the playing field. Well, that's Both the thing, too. Both in a too. good way and a bad way. That's Well, it's like, yeah, if you are a multi-million dollar, if you're making a million dollar movie, you should pay people to do things. But if you're just one guy trying to make a movie like you have an idea and you yeah. want to make it a reality and there's a program where you can type in your movie and it makes it for you, how do you say that's a bad thing? How do you prevent that from happening? That's still someone's idea coming to life. But it's tricky. I get it. People are really tied to this. But who who would have ever envisioned? I always think it's funny that when we made movies like back in the 80s, we made movies about the future. We got it so wrong. Like we didn't have the the screen in our house where we had to talk to people. Like no one ever thought you'd have a device you could carry around with you that mm-hmm. would have the entire world of information. Like nobody thought that. You had Terminator with with these endoskeletons with like AK-47 shooting us down. Nobody thought that AI would just be designing things that are better than other people can design. Right. Like nobody envisioned that. Like they took no. us out a different way. Do what? What is it? What they call it? Not doomsday. What was it called? Judgment day. Judgment day. Judgment it's coming. Day. It's gonna look a lot different. It's gonna have a lot of fun designs on it. Yes. But uh, that's the future. We got lots of problems. Lots of problems. <laughs> <laughs> but at least Ames is coming back. That's one one we go. good the one check mark in the good co- column. Sweet. I gotta talk about this because uh, we don't. I, I'm a big wrestling fan, um, but we don't talk about wrestling a ton on here. But I do need to talk about this. So CM Punk, one of my favorites, came back to WWE this year. He got hurt almost immediately. <laughs> so if you hate CM Punk, there's plenty of red meat on there, that for you. But Mattel now has the right to make CM Punk figures, and uh, you all know how much I enjoy the the Jazzwares CM Punk figures, especially the the Supreme they did, probably the best. I, I would say hands down the best. If you want to best CM Punk figure, if you want to debate that, we can, but I think it's the best. So Mattel now has the license to do CM Punk figures. They teased uh, a Mattel Creations Elite, not an Ultimate. So this isn't like what they did with Cody Rhodes, where they the first Cody Rhodes figures figure was an Ultimate, which is like the high end, like thirty dollar figure that comes with like alternate like heads and pants and other stuff. Just an Elite. 
So it was unveiled, and what it is is what CM Punk looked like the night he returned at the Survivor Series. And that night he was a surprise. He did not wrestle. He came out literally in a blank white t-shirt and gray jeans. And that's what the figure looks like. That's what oh. it is. <laughs> it does come with a second soft good shirt that's like the logo shirt they unveiled that you could buy on Shop Zone that night. This figure was supposed to, to go up for sale when Mattel did all their reveals this past Friday, but it did not. It got delayed. So I don't know what that's about. I wonder if the re- reception to the figure has been a little lukewarm and maybe they're rethinking things. I don't know. Maybe it's just a standard delay. But uh, I'm curious to see how this does and if people like it. And like, is this one of the scenarios where CM Punk fans will just buy anything? And this technically was what he looked like for his his return? Like, I don't know. I think I will be skipping it uh, for a lot of reasons. Number one, I think the Jazzware figure is just cannot be topped by a Mattel figure. But I'm curious to see what they do moving forward and what kind of uh, classic looks we get from Punk because hopefully he gets to have some more matches. The only match he had was at the Rumble and he got hurt and he's done for a little while. So we might only get retro or uh, not retro. Well, maybe we'll get a retro, but flashbacks and there's there's plenty of those to do. All right, everybody. Well, you know what we say. We don't want to grow up, but we already did. Have a great week, everybody.